Hello, my name is Danny Nolan and I'm the Director of Chassis Sim Technologies. And welcome to this latest episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner. And today, ladies and gentlemen, I've got a bit of a treat for you. What we're going to be talking about today is the magic number, what it means and what drives it. So, let's get started. Okay, the magic number is a very, very widely used parameter in race car engineering. And in particular, it started to make its appearance um, in widespread use around about the mid-80s and really got seriously coined in about the mid-90s. And ever since then, depending on which way, um, uh, depending on uh, which way the wind is blowing, what mood race car engineers are in, it will go into and out of favour. There are some people who will absolutely swear by this parameter that says that if you can get your combination of springs and bars and roll centers to match this, your car's going to be a bullet everywhere. And there are other people who think it's um, the biggest load of cod swallop that you'll ever see. The truth is always lies somewhere in the middle. And it's interesting. Of all the discussions I've ever seen about the magic number, what I find really, really interesting, they almost completely and utterly miss the point of what drives it. And that really is what we're going to be talking about at the heart of um, uh, this video. Now, what it does measure, and we're going to talk to, uh, talk more in depth about this very, very shortly, is it measures the percentage of lateral load transfer distribution um, at the front. So let's get to, let's get stuck into it. Okay, the let the magic number where it comes from is the it's a very very it's a very short name of saying the lateral load transfer distribution at the front and what drives it is our beam pogo stick model so what we have is for a given roll angle for a certain combination of front springs front bars rear springs and rear bars and roll centers what will happen is as that roll angle moves what will happen is that the tire load variation front to rear is going to change this is what the lateral load transfer distribution at the front coined the magic number measures. In terms of quantifying it, where it comes from is we go back, its roots can be found in the quarter car model. And effectively, what we're doing with the magic number, what drives it or where it actually comes from, how we measure it, is effectively the effective spring rate. And that effective spring rate is the spring rate of the body and the spring rate times the spring rate of the tire divided by the sum of the spring rate of the body and the spring rate of the, of the tire. So effectively, the effective spring rate of um, our quarter car uh, of our quarter car system. Because just remember, with any car model that we're going to deal with, you are effectively dealing with a body spring and a tire spring in series, and that's what we're uh, measuring. So. Extending that out to what it looks like in roll, what we've got, here's a very simple, a simplified breakdown of how you find the magic number. And for those of you who actually want to copy this uh, down, um, what I'd encourage you at this point to pause the video and um, write all these um, terms down. So let me walk you through it. So what we've got, um, the roll center mean. What that is, is the effective roll center at the center of gravity. So this is the front roll center, plus the weight distribution of the rear, roll center of the rear, minus roll center of the front. HSM, which is the moment arm between the CG height and the mean roll center, which is CG height times roll center mean. Now, here's where things get interesting. The, roll sp the effective roll spring at the front is our roll bar rate, plus your spring rate, times your tire rate, plus the sum of all your spring rates. And we do that for the front and the rear. This is actually, ladies and gentlemen, why, when I think about my bars, I actually much prefer them to think as a bar rate as opposed to quoting them as a newton meter per degree. I mean, newton meter per degree is, there's nothing wrong with that measure, I've all, but I've always found it to be a little bit esoteric. The reason I always prefer to go uh, to think of my bar rates as a spring rate for this formulation right here, that's just me. Um, but um, you're obviously totally at liberty to use whatever thing, whatever works for you, but that's what works for me. So the distribution or the lateral load transfer of the sprung mass only is the roll spring at the front divided by the roll spring at the rear plus the roll spring at the front and your lateral load transfer distribution, your magic number is your weight distribution at the front times your roll center at the front times, P, uh, uh, times our PRM times um, HSM all divided by H and so uh, 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 so effectively what we uh, uh, so what we're doing 
is effectively it's effectively the front lateral load transfer distribu uh, uh, the front lateral load transfer transfer distribution divided by 100 you can think about it as a percentage but that will be a number scaled between 0 and 1 now where things get really interesting is that you can now use this as a way of approximating tire load so here we've got um, your front tire load weight distribution at the front times mt times g F arrow at the front divided by 2, PRR times FYF plus FYR times H on uh, the mean track, and you do that for all your other tire loads. Now, I work through that in greater depth in my book, The Dynamics of um, uh, the Race Car, but the beauty about something like this is it gives you that instant handle on what your tire loads are doing, so you can now start to quantify what the car is doing. So, using the lateral load transfer distribution at the front. Now, where it will come from and where it sort of had its origins was a very, very simple static force balance. And so consequently, when you start thinking of the magic number, it's a really good first cut of how to quantify understeer and oversteer. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, it comes with a very, very big caveat. This is only static load transfer only. There are no transient and there's going, and it, and it will struggle if you've got a tire that suffers from extra, uh, uh, that, that um, suffers from a lot of uh, from thermal effects or nonlinear effects. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, this is a really great first cut to try and understand your tire sensitivities. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here's the thing: when I first did this video, it would have been, if my memory serves me correctly, it would have been about six or seven years ago. That's where I left the discussion. That being said, uh, through the fullness of time, when I thought about these matters a little bit more, I just figured, hang on. You know, everyone talks, there, there's a, there is a very, very strong minority of, uh, I wouldn't even call it a minor, minority, there's a big, uh, big slunk, uh, a big chunk of race engineers who swear by this number. And it only really hit me in the last couple of years as to why this number is so significant. So, here we go. Where this number becomes significant is when you can tie this to a tire model. Now, if we take this the second order traction circle radius um, versus load characteristic of our traction uh, of our tire model as a start, we can break that down as our initial coefficient of friction times the peak load divided by two divided by the load peak. This actually, ladies and gentlemen, really underscores why the simulation work that you'll do is so important because now you've got the tools to try and understand what the magic number is going um, uh, to, tell, uh, to tell you. So what we've now got to do is we do a simple force balance. Now, we can combine this into a simple, uh, into a simple Excel sheet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload this Excel sheet into my blog post with this particular video post so you'll have so you'll have this all, all all this to hand but the beauty about a little excel sheet like this is that you can now plot total lateral grip versus magic number but there's a little bonus and here's the little bonus ladies and gentlemen this is the little bonus that drives the magic number so if we plot total car grip as a function of magic number we get a curve that will look like this. So this is our lateral load transfer distribution at the front. This is our total lateral um, uh, tire force. So as you can see, we've got numbers that go from about 22, just a little bit over 22,500 newtons down to about 21,200 newtons, give or take. So typically, you're going to get about a 3 or 4% load variation. Now, in this business, yeah, you don't see, you don't sneeze at a, at a 3 to 4% load variation. But you look at that, and particularly if you take a look at most of the numbers you're going to be playing with in terms of race car setup, you're going to be, this is the sandbox that you're playing in right here. So the question you've got to ask is, so why is the magic number so important? Why do people get so hot and bothered about it? Here's the thing that drives the magic number. The thing that drives the magic number isn't necessarily the grip you get out of it. What drives it is the car stability. And that is really, 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 really critical. I'm going to see this in the next slide. So let me build up to this. Now, as we've discussed, we can quantify this by the stability index. So, and to quantify this, what we do is we start with a fixed rear slip angle and we let the front vary. And that front, and that variation of um, front slip angle 
versus um, uh, rear stop angle, provided the rear stop angle is fixed, can be approximated by this little formula here, which is our total traction circle radius um, at the front divided by our sum of, uh, sorry, at the rear, I should say, divided by A times your um, uh, uh, total traction circle radius uh, at the front. So let me just restate that again. Our moment arm, uh, uh, our moment arm from the CG to the rear axle of our rear uh, of our total traction circle radius of the rear tires a times the total traction circle radius of the rear tires now where this comes from is a very very simple force balance now that's an approximation you could get a little bit uh, you could get very very finicky with it but those numbers in there will probably only vary by about um, a couple of percent now so you wonder okay so all that being said given that comes from a force balance let's now see what that does to the stability index. When we plot that as a function of our lateral load transfer distribution at the front or the magic number, take a look at this. Take a look at how that stability index varies. Now, I did this for two different tire models to show you how a setup is going to vary with two tire models. Take a look at that. Take a look at the sandbox that we'll usually play with. This is the sandbox that we play with. Take a look here. We've gone from a stability index of by minus one, minus two, two uh, percent, and by a change of say 0.05, all of a sudden the stability index goes down for 10 percent. That is when the driver comes back to you and screams night and day, my God, the thing handles like a jet to, oh my God, it is understeering like a pig. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the magic behind the magic number. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is what truly drives it. Once you understand that, the rest of it slots into place. Now, don't get me wrong. If we go back to here, because this is a very, very simple traction circle radius versus load characteristic, once we take into account thermal effects, the magnitude of this will probably go, um, uh, will probably go from... 3 to 4% over the whole gambit of your lateral load transfer for distribution to about 10% once we take into account proper thermal effects. That being said, the flip side is that all of a sudden, this now becomes a lot more sensitive. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the magic behind the magic number. It's not necessarily the grip, albeit that is what I would call a lower order, first order effect. What drives it, ladies and gentlemen, is the, is the stability index. Because make no mistake, ladies and gentlemen, as race engineers, we have two currencies, grip and balance. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the nail right there. So, some conclusion and parting thoughts. The lateral load transfer distribution at the front is, uh, is often termed the magic number. Now, uh, now, this is not the complete story. That being said, this is an excellent start. And to any novice race engineer, any novice data engineer, any novice uh, performance engineer. For me, this is a very, uh, understanding the significance of the lateral load transfer distribution at the front is an essential stepping stone in your knowledge of race car vehicle dynamics. But here's the nail, here's the magic behind the magic number. The variation of the grip isn't huge, but the stability varies significantly. If you get your head around that, ladies and gentlemen, and you truly understand that, you will be in a great position to truly understand the magic number and how to employ it properly. So that sums up our little tutorial for uh, today. I hope you enjoyed it. And also too, ladies and gentlemen, a uh, word from our sponsor here is one of the great things about Chassis Sim is that when you start playing around with the setups, is one of the return channels you get is in fact the stability index. So. For those of you who are um, existing members of the Chassis Sim community, give that a play. Have a really good look at it. And for those of you who are not members of the Chassis Sim community, uh, uh, who are not members of the Chassis Sim community, um, by all means, download our online simulation um, and have a play with it and um, see what you can learn. So that sums up our tutorial for today, and we look forward to catching you in the next episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics.